What's up, future millionaires? Mike the Investor. And if you haven't heard yet, Robinhood was hacked. Now, this is terrible news for investors like myself that is using the platform, as well as future investors that are thinking about using the Robinhood app. Now, I'm briefly going to discuss a couple things in this video. The first one is going to be the Robinhood hack briefly. Number two, I'm going to discuss with you my thoughts and am I going to stay with Robinhood or am I going to use a different investing platform? And last but not least, I'm going to show you how to set up your two-factor authentication on the Robinhood app if you don't know how to do so. Also, your backup code. So let's dive right into it. Welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to smash that like button and also click the subscribe button if you like the content. And before we dive into the video, be sure to share this video out with a friend or any investor that you know, because not everyone knows about the Robinhood hack, including the ones that are using this platform. I'm gonna be showing you an article on Bloomberg. There are a ton of different articles that you can go to. If you just go to Google and you type in a Robinhood hack, you can see there are a ton of different articles that you can go to. You have CNN, you have the New York Post, Tech Times, uh, Investatopia, uh, Bloomberg, of course, and Bloomberg is going to be the uh, article I'm briefly going to share with you. So we're going to go over to the Bloomberg part here. And as you can see for the headline, Robinhood internal pro finds hackers hit almost 2,000 accounts. Now, there are over 13 million users on the Robinhood app, and that does include myself and you if you are a Robinhood investor. Now, I know there are a ton of financial investors in the YouTube community that are leaving Robinhood or that's already left Robinhood as well. So I'm gonna share with you here in a minute my thoughts and what I plan to do. So I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit here on this article. I just wanna point out one thing that I wish Robinhood would have already had, and this is probably the biggest con or biggest downfall for Robinhood in my personal opinion. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit in this brief paragraph here, it's gonna say the attacks unleashed a torrent of complaints on social media, which definitely went viral, where investors recounted uh, attempts to call the brokerage. Now, as we know, we don't have a direct number, you know, as investors to use uh, to call customer support for Robinhood. Now, this is the biggest downfall, in my opinion, uh, for Robinhood that I definitely think they should implement really soon. So it goes on to say, which doesn't have a customer service phone number, Robinhood, which has more than 13 million customer accounts, is now considering whether to add a phone number along with other tools, you know, for security. I think they should have kind of been had this. So I'm definitely in agreement with you if you believe Robinhood should have definitely already had a customer number to contact. I know there are other brokerages, you know, that have, you know, customer numbers to contact if you have an issue, you know, like Fidelity, for example, TD Ameritrade, just to kind of name some of the ground players. Now, I do want to say if you do switch investing platforms, it doesn't exclude you for something like this happening, you know, potentially you still getting hacked or something fraudulent happening with your account. Not stating that if you switch to another platform, you may have a better chance of it not happening, but keep in mind that this can happen, you know, to any investing platform. Platform. Now, definitely Robinhood has been under the light a lot with a lot of things happening with the Robinhood with them going down. Now we have the hacks again. So it's definitely been a lot of controversial, you know, talk on the Robinhood. But I'm going to uh, stick with Robinhood for the time being. I do have my eyes on a few other investing platforms that I could potentially switch to. And the good thing about Robinhood, because it is so well known, it makes that transfer very easy to other investing platforms. That is, that is also something to keep in mind as well. So I'm going to show you the main reason as well why I'm going to decide to, you know, stick with Robinhood besides me liking the user phase. Uh, also, with this could happen to any investing platform, 
and I just decide I do want to stick with Robinhood for the time being. Now I'm going to show you how to get to some of your disclosure reports on Robinhood because it can be kind of difficult to find and I'm showing you this so that way you can read this for yourself because I believe this is a big deal you know for investors like you and me to figure out what investing platform is going to be best for us and our family. So once you're on the Robinhood app you just go to Robinhood.com and what you're going to do you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then you're just going to hit view important disclosure so once you click on that it's going to pull up a white window now i just want to focus on this uh statement part here now it's going to say robin hood financial llc is a member of the sipc now the sipc is the securities protection corporation which protects securities customers of its members up to $500,000. Now that's half a million dollars. And then in parentheses, it says including $250,000 for claims for cash. Explanatory brochure available upon request or at www.sipc.org. As you can see, we are on the SIPC website and you can see the Securities Investor Protection Corporation protects customers if their brokerage firm fails. And that's what Robinhood is to us, is a investing brokerage to their members. Now let's briefly look at what SIPC does. It says, if it happens, SIPC protects the securities and the cash in the brokerage account up to $500,000, which is half a million dollars. Looks familiar, right? We just read this on a Robinhood important disclosure. And then it goes to say the $500,000 protection includes up to $250,000, so a quarter million dollars protection for cash in your account to buy securities. So for example, say you have an account with $400,000 and you have $200,000 in cash sitting on the sidelines. That will be considered your buying power, what you have available, you know, to buy stocks, bonds, you know, gold, ETF, whatever type of investing and brokerage you're using, you know, at that time, it will be covered if they have the SIPC backing it. And Robinhood does. So I only have about $10,000 in my personal, you know, Robinhood account. So if something was to happen worst case scenario you know my money would be covered so i would be able to give my securities uh, back which does give you know me and other investors with smaller amounts in their account peace of mind so that is the main reason why i'm going to decide you know to stay with robin hood but the main three things if you want to take away from this video is as we can see my money is still insured number two i really really like the robin hood user phase you know convenience uh, the entertainment, me enjoying it, you know, it goes a lot to say how strong their user phase is. And I believe that's why there are still investors that are still sticking with Robinhood as well. And then the third thing is that this type of thing can happen to any other investing platform. We got to keep in mind that Robinhood is the most popular investing platform out there. They have over $4 million in revenue every single day. And with hacking and scam being at its all time high, uh, definitely they're gonna go for Robinhood because it's a big fish. Some of these smaller brokerages may not have to deal with as many hack attempts as Robinhood. So just keep that in mind, but you have to do what's best for you and your family. And so you have that peace of mind as well. So now let's go ahead and pull up the Robinhood app so I can go ahead and show you guys how to set up your two-factor authentication and your backup code as well. Let's check it out. So now we are on the Robinhood app and you're just going to go over to the person's icon and all you're going to do is just hit the settings tab. Now on the settings tab, you're going to see down at the bottom, there is a security section. So you have your devices, device security, I have my face ID enabled, and then you have the two factor authentication and you can see that is enabled as well. Now, once you click on your two factor authentication and then you click the toggle, which you can see it is green for me, it will then prompt you how you want to do your two-factor authentication. You can do that by email, 
text message. So you can pick which way is best for you. Now, the last thing I would highly recommend for you to do will be generating a backup code. Now, this backup code, what this is gonna do, if you ever get locked out of your Robinhood account and you can't gain access to it, this will allow you one time to get access back to your Robinhood account. So I would highly recommend, besides doing the two-factor authentication, do the backup code and write it down, put it up in your safe or whatever you use to secure your private information. So briefly, I wanna share with you what this backup code is in Robinhood's terms. So we're gonna hit the learn more. And you can see it does tell you about the two-factor authentication as well. So we're just gonna scroll down and you can see using the backup code, you can use your one-time emergency backup code to log into your Robinhood account in the event that you ever lose access to your device. You will still need your username and password to sign into your account, but you will be able to use the emergency backup code in place of your two-factor authentication code. So you definitely wanna use this backup code because it just kind of gives you that extra layer of protection. So investors, if this was the first time you hearing about the Robin Hood hack, be sure to go ahead and smash that like button and also share this video out because trust me, you're not the only one who doesn't know about this. And I believe the entire investing community should know about this so they can make the best decision best for them and their family. So be sure to go over there and follow me on Instagram at Mike the Investor. Remember to stay inspired, stay motivated, always invest in yourself, and I'm out.